say one of the best qualities of this vehicle is the chassis is very sturdy and very solid. So if you're off-road, things aren't going to get bent. You don't have a ton of aluminum at the bottom to save weight, to make it ride like a car or anything like that. This is unapologetically an SUV. And I love that Toyota has kept it that way. If you don't want something right. like this, so today we're going to take a look at an underrated, often overlooked classic of an SUV. And in the past, this SUV has had its own challenges, one being the price. I mean, the resale value is great because it's a Toyota, but the price has not been worth it versus things like Explorers and Chevy, whatever model they have out because they change them so much. But this is a very high quality vehicle. It's not the most futuristic and modern in its looks inside or outside. It's more square, utilitarian looking. But I will say that in 20 years, you will see more of these on the road going strong than you will see of these. These are more comfort, car, contemporary styling, contemporary electronics looking and serving vehicles. And there's nothing wrong with that. These are good vehicles if you take care of them. I believe they'll last. But I think if I were getting a vehicle that I was just going to keep indefinitely, it would be the forerunner just because i think it's still body on frame um but just walking around this one you know you have the ride height i love these tires these are probably like 16 inch wheels on good sized tires so you do have some utility if you want to go camping or on a dirt road um you got tow hitches on each and every single one of these not going to be as fast as a Telluride or a Palisade. However, if you're running a marathon, as far as keeping the vehicle, these are the way to go. So they do sit up a little bit higher, but if you can imagine, with the seats down all the way, you have plenty, plenty of cargo room. Even without them being down, there's plenty of space here. So that's dope. This is a limited trim. It does not have an automatic tailgate, which is okay. But this is good interior volume. Sorry, I didn't let that headrest down. This is a lot of space if you're needing to haul stuff. Or, but you do have to let the seat up pretty far just to get everything to fold down. Let me show you how easy these vehicles are, these seats are to move. So if you needed to get in this back seat, you could just do that to get in the back seat. You do have to climb up a little bit, but so putting this seat down is just a matter of flipping the switch and pushing it down. So before I get in, I will say, say these seats look more like jump seats. So as far as like size to interior seating volume and space, um, the Palisade may have this SUV beat just because the back end sits up higher. So moving this chair back, I don't have a ton of room back here. This would not be super comfortable. I'm 6'1". I could sit back here for a little while. I wouldn't want to sit back here on like a road trip because with the floor being so high, my knees are sitting up closer to my chest, but this interior looks good. It feels high quality like any other Toyota. You do have vents there. The backs of the seats are hard, so they're not gonna like get soft and fall apart. Um, the backs of these seats are very nice, very solid. Um, you do have anchors here. If you're sitting back here, not too much entertainment. You do have a window, so that's super dope. Um, so you don't feel entirely claustrophobic. You have cup holders back here. Um, there are no vents or speakers, so you might want to have your iPhone charged and ready because there's no charger back here, but you can, like I said, let the seats down relatively easy with these buttons. And so down they go and everything feels solid. But like I said, this is kind of jump seaty. All right, so in this part of the video, I did not do a good job of explaining that the 4Runner does not have the best ease of operation when looking at putting the seats up or down. There are some levers involved with pulling the headrest down, moving the seats forward, and getting them to lay completely flat. Um, there's also a learning curve to pushing the cushion, the third row cushion in and out. So if you're someone who's not super familiar with levers and moving seats around this may not be the best vehicle for you especially if you don't need the utility 
Um, also, if you have kids with the increased ride height, it's going to be harder for them to get in and out of the vehicle. So that's another thing to consider. I would say the Ford Explorer, Kia Telluride, or Hyundai Palisade are much more car comfortable and have way better ease of operation when it comes to those things. Doors close solidly. Um, you know, the body is steel. You're not dealing with aluminum here. here. Step up's not super high. Um, this is a 2017, so, I mean, these never look super futuristic, but it does have cooled seats, which is awesome. Um, it looks modern. Yeah, it's super nice. Easy to use. Ease of use is there. I wouldn't have to kind of guess around if I hopped in and this was like a rental car. Um, you do have push button start. You do have an auto hold button. Oh, you do have four wheel drive here, excuse me. Um, and you can set the modes from that, not lockers, but... Anyway, yeah, the air conditioning system's laid out. And this is the typical look of a 4Runner. And so that leads me to my last and final point. The styling of the 4Runner has looked the same for over 20 years. So you can get one and not have it look old because the manufacturer is very insecure and they keep changing the outside of the vehicle so frequently that it looks like another vehicle and you have to guess you know what generation that kind of thing or if it's even the same vehicle so here's another one stepping in you know the interior similar the screen's a little smaller this isn't as premium but it does have comfortable seats, good bolstering here, step and height's the same, automatic driver's seat. This is a 2016, pretty similar. You can see the bumper is a little bit lower on this one. Um, this one seems to sit a little bit higher maybe, maybe not. Um, here's the TRD, let's take a look at that. Not an automatic tailgate, again, I like this better with the darker interior. You'll notice this is a five passenger SUV and I really don't mind that. Um, just for the utility that you get out of it, usually you're not gonna be doing a lot of dirt roads, trails, campsites in SUVs that seat seven or eight people. They're just too big. Um, but yeah, this has cloth seats back here. You do have an electrical outlet. So this covers all the basics. And I, I would say one of the best qualities of this vehicle is the chassis is very sturdy and very solid. So if you're off-road, things aren't gonna get bent. You don't have a ton of aluminum at the bottom to save weight, to make it ride like a car or anything like that. This is unapologetically an SUV. And I love that Toyota is kept. If you don't want something like this, you can get a Highlander. If you need something smaller, you can get a RAV4, but this is a very, very crispy and cool layout. Um, I've shown you three. I would show you four, but they're all the same. I mean, this interior feels good. The bolstering on this these seats is nice. So it's not super old school like an SUV where the seats are just flat and you're not really held. And not that you're gonna be turning crazy quarters, corners in this anyway, but you know, you do have little step up rail here um, which is nice the step in height is not super super high but you even have vents back here and um, you have some net pockets. This is a 2019 so as you can see this is a traditional key start which I don't mind at all on an SUV I love these SUVs and um, they have good strong engines like I said they're not the fastest SUV but it has a Toyota engine that's gonna outlast that one. And then 20 years down the road, 